Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl and welcome back to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for making the Nova Knit Mobius pattern. This beautiful lacy fabric is deceptively easy and quick to make. The Mobius is worked flat in rows before the fabric is twisted and sewn into a tube. This lacy fabric would also make a fabulous scarf or wrap if left unsewn. You will need 600 yards of number two sport weight yarn, US 8 5 millimeter knitting needles, a second set of same size knitting needles, yarn needle, scissors, and two yards of contrasting color scrap yarn for the cast on. This project is shown in Be So Sporty Bling Yarn in color Peach Sherbert. This project begins with a provisional cast on, and what that means is we're going to use our working yarn and some scrap contrast yarn to create the cast on edge that we will then at the end of the project, be able to take those live stitches off of the contrast yarn to be able to do a three needle bind off for a really beautiful finish. So how we get started on a provisional cast on is you wanna hold both tails of both yarns in your right hand with the right needle. And then holding the two yarns in your left hand, like you would do at the front and back tail for a long tail cast on. You're doing it the same way, but with two different yarns. So you want the contrast yarn around your thumb and the working yarn around your index finger. And we're going to loop through the contrast yarn, then pull a loop through with the working yarn. And you'll see that we have the working yarn placed on the needle and the contrast yarn wrapped around the base of the stitch. So we'll do that again, nice and slow. So as long as the contrast scrap yarn is in the front and your working yarn is in the back, you would just cast on the same way you would normally do a long tail cast on, but we will have that working yarn as a cast on stitch with these loops on the needle and the rest of the cast on is made with loops with the contrast yarn that will later pick out of the stitches to create a beautiful finish and you'll see that at the end of the video. So we're going to refer to the pattern to see how many stitches to cast on. We are working in a multiple of five. And then to begin the pattern you want to knit the first two rows. For row three, we're going to wrap the yarn around the needle twice before each stitch. So you're gonna insert your needle as if to knit the first stitch, then yarn over twice, and then that third wrap around is the equivalent of knitting the stitch. So depending on how you want to look at it or say it, we're going to wrap the yarn three times and then pull through the stitch. So what we're doing is creating two extra wraps and that third wrap is the knit stitch. And you wanna repeat this all the way across the row. And keep in mind that at the end of this row, however many stitches you had for your cast on, it's going to look like three times the amount of stitches because there are two extra wraps for each stitch on this row. On row four, we're going to be slipping five stitches at a time over to the right hand needle, dropping all of the loops, and then working into all five stitches at the same time. So let me show you how we do that. Starts with slipping the first five stitches purl wise with the yarn and back. So purl wise meaning from right to left into the front of the stitch. You're gonna slip the stitch and drop the two extra loops. And we're going to do that for the first five stitches. We're only working in sections of five stitches at a time. Okay, so now we have all five of those stitches with the uh, extra wraps dropped, so they're now elongated stitches. We're going to take that left hand needle and insert it into all five stitches so that we can now knit into all five of them together. So it's going to be knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, 
and knit one into all five of those stitches, then slide them off the needle. So we're not doing any increases or decreases. It looks like it because we've got extra stitches and yarn overs in there, but we're representing all five of those stitches with these five stitches, knit one yarn over, knit one yarn over, knit one, is five stitches to represent those five. So let's do all of that again. We're going to keep our yarn in back and slip the next five stitches purlwise. One, two, three, four, five. And as we're slipping those five stitches, the extra loops just fall off the needles. So that creates these elongated stitches. Then take your left hand needle and insert into the front of all five of those stitches and then with them all together we're going to work knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, and knit one. And you want to repeat this all the way across and at the end of this row you should be back to your original stitch count at the end of a row four and even though we're only repeating rows one through four for the remainder of the pattern what I wanted to show you here is how to recognize your stitches for repeating a row one after repeating a row four so a row four is when we cluster five of the elongated stitches and work a knit one yarn over knit one yarn over knit one into them and in case your stitches get bunched up or even crossed over a little bit I want you I want to help you recognize what they're supposed to look like for knitting because we're just knitting straight across on a repeat of row one so what I want to show you here first is if you look closely the knit stitches are behind the cluster and the yarn overs are in front of the cluster so these five stitches are lined up properly so we're just going to knit all five of these and as I work across the row I'll try to find some that are not as perfectly placed here so I can show you how you fix them okay on this repeat we've got one that crosses over so we'll knit across these five and when we get to the third set here I will show you um, what to look for and how to fix it if your stitches end up being crossed on top of each other so you can see here this yarn over is sitting in is kind of crossing over the knit stitch in the middle so you just want to push them to the side you want them to all have their own space because sometimes what will happen is I'll find this yarn over in front of the knit stitch like that and you don't want to knit them in that order you want to knit them in the correct order so then you just want to make sure they're lined up properly and knit into all five of them and so this is a repeat of row one knit across then row two is also knit across then just want to re uh, refer back to your pattern for repeating rows one through four for your desired length now whether you're making this a scarf a wrap an afghan or the original mobius pattern for the mobius that i'm making i'm shooting for around 40 inches for the length at the end of the last repeat you want to work rows one and two one more time and before we uh, join this with a three needle bind off we need to get the cast on stitches from that provisional cast on we need to get them put back on a second set of knitting needles so that's why we do a contrast color of yarn when we do the provisional cast on and that's so that you can easily see where the stitches are so i have see these like upside down use these bumps right here that's the live stitches so i just want to insert them back onto a knitting needle and as i do i will then pull the scrap yarn out of the stitch as i go so it's a bit of a tedious process but it is so worth it because you get this beautiful seamless uh, three needle bind off because of using this technique See, I'm going to grab a yarn needle, actually. That's really helpful for picking these out. So as I insert, so as I insert the next stitch onto the needle, I can start picking out. Whoops. <laughs> you can pick out those extra wraps. There we go okay and then there's the next bump for the next stitch so we'll insert that onto the needle 
and then pull the scrap yarn out. Make sure you don't split the yarn. You want to make sure that you're pulling it out completely. Okay, pretty good here. And grab the next bump of a new stitch. And you just want to repeat this all the way across. And when you've finished getting all of the stitches back live on the knitting needle, you should have the same number of stitches that we originally cast on, so that we have the same number of stitches on both the set of knitting needles that holds the last row of the work, and then these needles that hold the first row of the work. Okay, so we're now ready to do the three needle bind off. If you were making a plain cowl, just a tube, you would line up the cast on edge with the last row edge before doing the three needle bind off. But we're doing a Mobius, so what that means is you're gonna take one side and flip it one time. Okay, and so that way we've created that Mobius twist. Now we're going to line up both sets of our needles and this is what we call a three needle bind off. So we're going to be lining up the stitches from both sets of the needles and then taking the free end of either one of those needles and binding them off together. So we'll line all of this up. And then with that free needle from one of the sets, we're going to insert the knitting needle into the first stitch of each set of stitches and knit them together and slide the stitch from the front needle and the back needle off. So we've knit those two together. So now we'll insert our needle to knit the next stitch on each set of needles, the front and back, and then knit them together. Then with either one of these needles here, you wanna pick up that first stitch and pull it up and over the second stitch to bind off. So we're doing the same thing that we would normally be doing to bind off, except we're adding the extra step of knitting these two stitches together instead of just knitting one stitch before binding off. So we, once that stitch is over on the right-hand needle, then we take one of these to pull it up and over the first stitch and bind off. And you wanna to try to do this pretty loosely. You don't wanna to pull too tight on this. I like to have a nice loose bind off. If you're having trouble knitting the two stitches together simultaneously, notice how I did that one where I did each step separately. Now that I said it, I'll point it out a little closer this time. So we'll insert our knitting needle into the next two stitches on the next one on the front and the next one on the back needle. Now to knit them together, if you're having trouble pulling through all of it at once, you can manually pull through the back stitch first and then the front stitch, after, front stitch afterwards. That's fine too. As you're getting used to doing this, it might be easier to do that. And then as you feel more comfortable, you'll knit into the front stitch and the back stitch, pull through to knit both together. That's okay though, if you can't do them at the same time, do them individually like we did on the previous stitch and then pass the first stitch up and over the second stitch and try to keep a loose tension while doing this so that we have a nice loose bind off. And you wanna repeat this all the way across, then fasten off. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all about anything we talked about in this video, please leave them for me in the comments. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.